Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, guys. Hope everybody had um, a really uh, good weekend. Um, not too much to complain about today. Um, I, you know, after Friday, um, you know, I, I, I really, you know, I was really very, very angry at myself. Obviously, you know, we talked about this in, in, in detail on last night's video. So I, I really wanted... Um, a seamless day today. I, I kind of wanted a very, very specific day uh, without burning a lot of mental equity over analyzing things, uh, very, very clean paths to the goal line. And I just didn't want to get anything, you know, I, I didn't want to get creative today. I think that was the biggest uh, part. Um, I woke up today very, very focused, uh, short memory uh, from Friday's debacle of my NVIDIA trade. So I was very, very focused at task at hand. The question of today's session was, well, how much value were we going to have? Uh, obviously, we had the gap up. Uh, we had that news come out over the weekend about more stimulus, uh, you know, all that. So we wanted to see, can the bulls sustain any type of momentum? And the big number that we talked about over the weekend was for the bulls to reclaim that 257 area. And everything was all good, right? I mean, it was... Uh, the market gapped up, you know, market gapped up and then immediately hit supply and started moving lower. And you, you have to give the bulls an incredible amount of kudos today because they could have easily let this market completely fade. You had all these COVID cases. You had news coming out uh, that literally everybody on the, on, the, on the Florida Marlins or Miami Marlins, whatever the hell they call these days, like 15 people. Uh, tested positive for COVID. So you had that game canceled. You had the Phillies game with the Yankees canceled today. And you had all these rumors that, you know, baseball was gonna, is done for the year. And now, now you had all these people speculating was all sports going to be done for the year. And if that happened, was there going to be a trickle, down, a trickle domino effect of, well, if sports is canceled, well, how can we sell, send our kids uh, to school and they were going to be safe. So the Bulls did a lot of really good things today. And not only did they not sell off, and that was the most important part, uh, if you look at the daily chart, they really reclaim this supply zone, right? They, this supply zone uh, that was major support that every single time it hit, we've been talking about this area now since the bottom of the March uh, sell-off, the Bulls did a great job, an excellent, excellent job, reclaimed supply, and a lot of the stocks they demonstrated with you know, they demonstrated a lot of strength with it. Now again, are we you know are we out of the woods yet? No, absolutely not. We still need to uh, confirm this five and ten day moving average. But the bulls did their job at least for today. Uh, just like we talk about uh, every single day, we're, we're trying to take it day by day, trade by trade. So again. It's very, very hard to get excited about what's going to potentially happen up here until baby steps need to take place here. And the Bulls really need to good, do a good job uh, to confirm for tomorrow. And if you look at a lot of names, they actually put in very, very good sessions today. Not only as far as price per share, kind of where we are macro. So, for example, Tesla looked like it was about to fall off, fall off a cliff. And what it did today, just as te in pure Tesla form... It reclaimed the five, the 10 day moving average. That's bullish. Uh, Square that had a very, very big run, right, over the last uh, couple of months, again, did exactly the same thing. Reclaimed the five, the 10 day moving average. Again, super bullish. Same thing with Roku, right? So Roku reclaimed the five day moving average and on and on and on. You can go through, not every single chart is this bullish, right? But there's enough of them to kind of get excited for the measure potential, what potentially can happen tomorrow. And that's kind of the key. You want to get a sense of where the money flow can be. And if you go through uh, the beta names tonight, I mean, there's only like, what, 10 of them, 12 of them. It's really not that much work to figure out which ones are literally a day away from possibly going on incredible runs. Now, again, two things need to happen. Number one, uh, we need confirmation both macro on the queues, and number two, we need macro confirmation on these individual charts. But again, you don't need to be uh, very, very creative tonight. I, I think these are one of those days 
uh, sessions that you kind of like for the next day because again, you don't need to overthink. You don't need to look at uh, 600 different charts. The stocks with the biggest measure potentials are always are going to be on the focus list for the next day. And if they confirm, all you need to do is catch one. We all know that for all you guys who trade Netflix and Tesla and Amazon and Facebooks of the world, and everything in between, you kind of know all you need to do is catch one. And if you watch kind of the option order flow today, you saw uh, weekly call buying coming in aggressively on Roku, weekly, uh, weekly and monthly. Uh, aggressive call buying coming in on Amazon. There was a big monthly uh, bet on Tesla, so forth and so on. So again, for tonight, you really don't need to be creative. Um, what I like about today's session was I, I really didn't expect a lot from today's session pre-market. And we talked about that because again, we were getting the gap up on the stimulus news and I really wanted to see what happened next because most of the charts were gapping up or about to hit supply, okay? And this is, and as soon as they hit supply, obviously, the, you know, everything started coming in lower. What I liked about today's day, the alternative names, okay? The names that we usually don't typically trade, they had really, really good days. And I was trading names today like NKLA, uh, LMND, for God's sake, uh, LMND, uh, what else was that? It was in, oh, I sold my, uh, I mean, talk, talk about, again, we, we've been talking about order flow on small cap stocks. I bought this thing, uh, at 52 cents on Friday with 250 calls. They were coming 250 calls. Uh, I sold a quarter Friday uh, after the close uh, at 57 cents up 10%. And today I sold the balance 63, 64 cents. I'm amazing. Uh, but, but again, what I like about today, we were very, very focused. It was a seamless day. There wasn't a lot of hiccups. And sometimes mentally you need a day like that. Like I, I just, I didn't feel like fighting with you know the, the the you know the usual suspects today because again after my kind of mental deficiency my mental hiccup on 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 friday i wanted the clearest path to the goal lines and if you look at the pivots today we got exactly that we got good bounce plays we got uh really good pivots to the long side we got some pivots to the short side as well um and all this you know again like once in a while you just need that you know nice and calm day again there's no such thing as an easy day okay any trader ever tells you they had an easy day or a fun day. I don't know what they were. You're smoking. Okay. I've never had an easy or fun day in over 20 years. Okay. I'm still waiting to get to that point, but from all intents and purposes, at least today was calm. It was very efficient. Uh, we waited, we confirmed. And again, there was no jumping. There was no anticipating a trade. Everything was done uh, very, very well technically. So going into tomorrow, obviously I want to give the bulls uh, the benefit of the doubt. There are so many charts that are very, very close to kind of busting out. Um, and obviously, again, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out who they are. Just go through, you know, go through 10, 12 beta names. You kind of see uh, who's in charge of tomorrow's order flow. But again, very, very seamless day um, and pretty good stuff. I mean, really, really good stuff. There was literally something uh, there for everybody. And, I, and I've always maintained the fact that, again, you don't need to trade Tesla and Amazon and Facebook to trade pivots. I mean, there was plenty of stocks there. I mean, if you actually go through the feed in the first two, three hours. I don't think there was a beta name there, okay? And, and the most amazing part was, again, it doesn't make a difference if it's a $2 stock, a $2,000 stock. As long as it has real volume and average true range, you could trade these stocks. Uh, so pretty cool day, uh, pretty cool day indeed. Uh, like I said, first thing I said, I'm done with ATM 6364. God bless, I wish it goes higher. Doesn't make a difference. Uh, AMD had a monster, monster move on uh, Friday, uh, on on the back of the deficiencies of Intel's quarter, and again, 70 needs to build. Uh, pretty nice move, very very aggressive right off the rip. Uh, here's the 70 pivot, right? Here's the 70 pivot, and once it got through the 70, uh, went to 70 71 60s. Really nice move on AMD. Again, again, a dollar 60 move on AMD is a pretty uh, good move. Uh, space I put into the channel never came close. Uh, to pivoting uh, OMI. Again, here's a perfect example. It has nothing to do with beta. Uh, 1540, 1550 needs to build. Here was OMI, right? Here was OMI right here. So it took out the 1540, 1550 area, traded to 1622. Really nice move on OMI. Um, I caught this trade pretty well. It, it, I, I didn't have the liquidity that I wanted here, but this uh, LMND Goldman Sachs in the morning uh, downgraded to sell $44 price target. I said 7450 74 if it builds below can flush and it, it flushed. I mean, that's the thing it flushed uh, again, 
Goldman Sachs is the most aggressive, uh, aggressive axe in any name. Uh, here's the 44 area, right? Here's the 44 area. So I shorted it. Uh, my lowest cover was down to 72. I mean, really nice move. I, again, if I think if it confirms here in the next couple of days, uh, it has more downside, but really nice trade. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, DraftKings I actually liked in the beginning of the day. Um, I had a pivot 32, uh, 32, 39, 20, 39, 30. And then all of a sudden that news came out about the Marlins, uh, Marlins catching 15 cases of COVID. And then there was speculation running wild that they were going to cancel the season. Obviously, DraftKings got killed and never saw the light of day, uh, even close to this 39.30 area. Uh, this was a great trade. I mean, really, really good trade. Uh, NKLA, uh, this was kind of the same thing that we were talking about. If you guys remember last week when Beyond was really, really oversold, same thing with NKLA. 32.50 needs to build. Uh, I got long this thing, and this thing exploded. Here was the 32.50. Again, this is what we talk about channels within channels sneaky pivots again there's nothing to do with the highs the lows this is where the steak is right this is where the meat and potatoes is and you can see how many times it got rejected 3250 right 3250 3250 3250 it finally took out the 3250 and this damn thing exploded to 35 dollars obviously there's going to be uh the continuation pattern in the next couple of days but beautiful trade there's nothing wrong uh with nkla um AMD cranking here. Uh, ZM 70, 250, not a big move. Uh, 250, 250, 50 needs to build. Uh, traded at like the 7280s, right? So here's a 7050, traded like 7280s, not a big move, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, Netflix 486 needs to build. I kind of like Netflix for tomorrow. Uh, here was Netflix. I didn't trade Netflix. Was, again, I was just trying to concentrate on other names of better value. But, you know, Netflix took out this channel, got a lot of $500 call buying coming in this thing. Uh, so we got to watch this thing for tomorrow. Closed at uh, 497 If you traded this thing, great move. Uh, I unfortunately did not on Netflix, but uh, again, it is what it is. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, Boeing got hit. Uh, 173 big support. If it builds below, can flush. Again, Boeing not looking healthy ahead of their earnings. So here is the 173. 173 traded all the way down to 169. Again, they're, they're reporting, I think they're reporting tomorrow. So big move on Boeing. Uh, NKLA, nice move there. And OMI, new highs there. Uh, excellent. I mean, really, really good, excellent stuff this morning. Uh, 35 supplies, sick moves. Uh, watch the COVID plays. Chewy, not, not a big move, but Chewy, 4680, 47. Uh, here was Chewy, not a big move at all. Uh, but again, not every single move needs to be big. So here was a 3680, 37. Uh, traded up to 4750s before reverse course. Resium, uh, we already talked about. Uh, oh, yeah. So here is again a perfect example of Tesla being Tesla, right? Uh, 1467 needs to build. Uh, for the afternoon cash flow spike. And again, it did more than a cash flow spike. Again, this is why Tesla is just the craziest stock out there. So here is here is the 467.50. Again, it's not the high of the day. These are the sneaky channels that are confirming. The longer the distribution is within the 60 minute channel, the higher probability to move. Now, again, I, you know, I, I tweeted this out. I thought there was a shot it could get to 1485 maybe 1500 if it if it if it really stretches out and yeah okay so this is tesla so uh here is 1485 right 67 85 1500 and oh by the way it only traded to 1550 so amazing just an amazing stock and tesla once you, get, you catch that wave it's gonna be a very very uh aggressive wave and that's it i mean so a really good uh you know very good you know easy on the brain type of day. And sometimes again, and it happens to me at once every three, four months, sometimes it's just really, really good and necessary in a weird, weird way. It's really good and necessary to get punched in the face, smacked into sense. So you don't really take for granted that everything will be all right. Respect your process, respect uh, your ability to stay out of trouble. Okay. Don't overthink. Don't be overconfident. Let the price action and technical analysis be your guide. But again, it's important not to skip steps. Again, if there's steps one, two, three, you don't skip to, to step three. One, two, three. And that was the name of the game today. Uh, good setups, uh, good course of action, good execution. And the most important part is we made it another day. Guys, God bless. Have, have a great night and I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. 
you're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.